John Keir's trend test. And we can see that I'm getting a chi-square for the Kruskal-Wallis of 5.65 and a p-value of 0.13, which is not less than p equal 0.05. The alpha level of 0.05 is smaller than the obtained p-value for the Kruskal-Wallis, so it is not statistically significant. So if you only knew about Kruskal-Wallis and you were afraid that your data were not normally distributed, and so you thought, oh, I have to do Kruskal-Wallis, you're not going to get a significant effect. But if you knew about John Keir's test, trend test, then you would get a significant effect. And then you could follow that up with Kendall's Tau's correlation for an effect size, which is also statistically significant because it's based on the same principles. Now, a median test is also not going to be statistically significant here. Because the median test typically is even less powerful than the Kruskal Wallace, but not always. In fact, in the median test example that I uploaded a few weeks ago, the median test was more powerful than the Kruskal Wallace, which can happen based on, uh, depending on how your data are, no, are distributed. So in this case, it's even less significant. 0 0.130 was the Kruskal Wallace p value, and the uh, median test is 0.187. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, what is the parametric equivalent of the John Keir uh, trend test? The, not the parametric equivalent of the Kruskal Wallace is the one way ANOVA. Well, what is the non What is the parametric equivalent of the John Keir test? Well, there is one, and what you have to do is a contrast test. But you can't do it in SPSS unless you know how to use syntax. And I'm going to follow that up in a future video where I talk about the. Uh, doing a trend analysis in the one-way ANOVA. It's really easy to do a trend analysis in the repeated measures ANOVA, which I did last week, uh, because it's, SPSS just does it by default. But when you have a between-groups design like this design, how do you do a trend analysis to do the parametric equivalent of the John Keir Terpstra, uh, Terpstra test? And what I'll, I'll show you just out of interest is the one-way ANOVA. Uh, I'm going to do it through the general linear model because that's how you can actually do the, the contrast. So fixed factors. And um, let's just, uh, yeah, I'm just going to do that. So let's look at the significance value. So we can see that if I do a one-way ANOVA on these data, I do not get a statistically significant effect. It's an F of 2.038 with um, 3 and um, 20 degrees of freedom. And uh, the p-value is 0 0.141. So it's not statistically significant. But this is not a trend analysis. This is not looking at a linear trend from lower to higher or from higher to lower, as we'd expect in this design, because the levels have roughly, um, it has meaningful uh, differences. So the group 1 had a small amount of formula exposure, group 2 a small amount, 3 a medium amount, and 4 a, a large amount. How can you do that contrast test in one way ANOVA? I'll do that video uh, in the next series that I upload. Thanks for watching How to Stats. I hope you found this useful.